Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Shrouded in legend, Coco's Island, somewhere in the endless expanse of the Pacific Ocean, discovered in 1535 by Spanish conquistadors, to this day still concealing legendary pirate treasures. Cliffs, breakwater, sharks, and unfettered nature guard their secret. But they've now been joined by a new treasure, the adventure story of an artistic project. This is a place of tremendous myth and legend, and uh, where Stevenson thought of, uh, you know, his Treasure Island story came from that uh, original, this location, most likely. Uh, many, many pirates, and there are many stories that are well documented in treasure maps that would indicate that huge treasures are buried here. This is a lot unlike any other. You as the winning bidder, will be the owner of a code of a beautiful enclosed GPS coordinate, a map that will lead you to a hidden treasure encased in a vacuum seal which will contain 40 extraordinary artists ranging from Marina Abramovich, Olafur Eliasson, Ed Rouchet, Los Carpinteros, and so on and so forth. A few months earlier in Vienna, Francesca von Habsburg has taken delivery of all the artworks. She is the initiator and the motor of this project. The works will be packed in steel containers for the long journey to Coco's Island. This art project is titled Treasure of Lima, a buried exhibition named after the lost church treasure of the Peruvian capital that is said to still be hidden somewhere on the isolated Pacific island. The expedition begins in Costa Rica. Flight from San Jose on the coast. On board, an international team, and among them, Nadim Samam, curator. Shark researcher, Ocean Ramsey. The initiator, Francesca from Habsburg of the Tissen Bornamica Academy the Swiss artist, Julian Charrier, and the American artist, Andrew Ranville. No one yet knows whether this mission will be a success. With a crew of seven, they make their way across the Pacific, 550 kilometers to their goal, Coco's Island, aboard the Dardanella. Hi, guys. Hey. hey. We have permission. Yes. We do. Look, there's Fernando's signature. There's the stamp of the uh, park authority of Coco's. Oh, my God. And the permission grants us pretty much everything we ask for, which I'm really pleased about. The only thing they didn't give us permission to do is blindfold the biological observer, but that was probably a step too far. Right? But that was my little bit of fantasy. It appeared yeah. to me, you know, it's a bit yeah. like Treasure Island yeah. Um, yeah. gangster. But yeah. then we didn't say how we're going to slit his throat either. No, no. I mean, I think their, their concern was that as an organization, they couldn't sign away the rights of someone who worked for them. But, yeah. you know, what can you do? But everything else makes sense, and um, we can bury it wherever we want. That's the thing that's, that's important, thing. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that we're performing uh, what, what an exhibition is in an unusual fashion. So the, under normal conditions, an exhibition is something that happens in a museum or a gallery. It's on the wall. Uh, it's accessible to the public. In this case, we've done the total opposite. This is an exhibition that 
should never be seen. It's buried. We're taking the artwork and we're digging a hole and we're putting it in the ground. A paradoxical undertaking. An art treasure is to be buried so that no one will see it. Treasure hunting on this deserted island is illegal. Strict conservational statutes are in effect. But the world will know that out here, in the endless expanse of the Pacific, there are buried artworks. I can hear dolphins. Francesca from Habsburg is listening to dolphins, the microphone dangling by a cable into the depths. Below the placid surface, the ocean bustles with life. Nadim Samam with Andrew Ranville uses the time for a photographic experiment. For the artists on board, the journey itself is a kind of performance, an experience that goes beyond the usual business of art. All those things that people criticize about contemporary art, they're talking about work that they see in, you know, in the museums or in the galleries. And they're sort of disappointed in those things that they have most ready access to. Sometimes, uh, you know, you have to travel further in order to encounter something that perhaps moves you in a different way or that changes your mindset. And traveling isn't just physical traveling. Sometimes you have to make a mental leap or you have to go on an intellectual journey to reach that place in which art says something other than what you might normally expect. It's Robinson Crusoe's cave and castle, apparently. So this is kind of like fiction. No, this is Robinson Crusoe's island. And he says I believe that it's Cocos Island. Coco's Island was also the inspiration for Robert Louis Stevenson's adventure novel, Treasure Island. A secluded paradise in the boundless Pacific. Coco's Island is nearly rectangular, seven kilometers long and five kilometers in width. The cliffs rise steeply out of the sea up to 200 meters high. The island is covered by a thick rainforest. It is Costa Rican territory. It became a national park in 1978. In 1997, it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since then, any sort of treasure hunting here is strictly forbidden. Fishing boats may come no closer than 12 miles. There are only two small bays that allow safe access to the island. It was given its name due to the many coconut trees growing here, as described by pirates in the 17th century. Today, only a few of the trees are left standing alone. On the stones of Chatham Bay, past visitors have chiseled their names for posterity to read. Even Steven Spielberg found inspiration here, choosing Coco's Island as the venue for the opening scene of Jurassic Park. Last time when I was here was in the 80s. Uh, what I heard, I think it was the one of the last treasure hunted the island. We came here with a lot of things, but it was many things. For example, they forgot that the treasure was down 200 years ago. And remember, it's uh, sand. Treasure is too heavy. So years and years, it's go down and down. That was one. The another thing is that the coastline in 200 years has changed many, many times. We find a very old bottle, uh, hinges, coffer hinges, uh, a piece of gold cool chain, but that was all. Two 
200 years ago, it was here that pirates brought the legendary Lima Church treasure of the Peruvian capital city. The treasure of Lima is rumored to include a life-size golden statue of Maria. For hundreds of years, this island was an important hideout for buccaneers because here, fresh water is abundantly available from natural springs. Vegetation thrives in the tropical climate. In 1889, August Gisler makes the journey from Remscheid, Germany to Cocos Island. He brings deer and pigs, and with the authorization from the government of Costa Rica, he even becomes the island's first governor. He's even able to convince a number of families to join him on his treasure hunt on the island. The last of the adventurers leaves after four years. Gisler remains. Even today, the island is populated by the descendants of these domesticated pigs who have adapted well to life in the wild. Gisler, the obsessed treasure hunter, can't give up. He toils through jungles and scales mountains. Other than a handful of gold coins, he finds nothing. When he finally leaves the island in 1908, he has lived there for nearly 20 years. Today, the island presents itself as a museum of lost illusions, etched into countless boulders on the beach. The evidence of adventurers and treasure hunters who sought the spectacular golden treasure of Lima in vain. But even the great oceanographer Jacques Cousteau visited the island many times he described it as the world's most beautiful island. This stone bears his inscription. Hundreds of kilometers still separate the art exhibition from the natural paradise. Art and nature, what is their relationship? Does art simply imitate the beauty of nature? The participating artists board a motorboat, and there they are, dolphins, nature's beauty exemplified, sublime moments. But art can do more. It should help to raise attention for the conservation of the natural ecosystem. This is the goal of the expedition team, and the reason shark researcher and preservationist, Ocean Ramsey, is here. Rolling, rolling. OK, so aloha is how we kind of greet everybody. I'm from Hawaii. That's where I grew up. And um, my dad's from San Diego. So I got to spend some time in cold water. We've got white sharks and mako sharks. And also in warm water, we've got all the other species around there. These are a couple, but this is like, OK, worst case scenario. This is a tiger shark. It's swimming up at me. Oh my gosh, it wants to eat you. What are you going to do? Nice little round nose. You can push his nose down. Diving, only a few meters into the depths, and the artists experience a new, fascinating world. Swarms of fish and the divers in the middle of it all. The ocean near Cocos Island is filled with countless fish and species, but also the world's largest occurrence of sharks. At least eight species are indigenous to the region. For this reason, the island is also known as Shark Island. And here he comes, a hammerhead shark. The large carnivore is now an endangered species. Mm -hmm. 
The entire shark population of the world is threatened by fishing. Up to 100 million sharks are caught each year solely for their fins, an Asian delicacy. The elegant creatures are even processed into fish meal and fertilizer. Was it a scary experience for the artists diving among the sharks? No, it was not scary. They are quite small. They are like a lot and really excited and like jumping into each other. Really, really impressive actually. Really nice. Oh, great dive. Like a big jack here. Hello! Hi. Uh, hi! Hi! So today I'm gonna talk uh, about what I'm doing and maybe also why I'm here, but it's probably not why I'm here, what I'm doing, but anyway. So I decided to start with this project we did with Julius von Bismarck in Venice, where we uh, build uh, an apparatus who were uh, um, actually painting pigeon. I like to make something what people talk about, and, and I don't need to be like political or activist, but I like to have an idea of uh, something or change uh, slightly the reality of some people who have to react. So it's not that they want to react, so they have to react, like a few projects. People just get hungry, and this hunger sometimes stay hunger, and sometimes may bring the people to, to another level. The works of Julien Charrier and Julius von Bismarck reflect our relationship to nature. To create illusions as here, or melting icebergs with the welding torch, it is provocation that demands contemplation. Arrival at Cocos Island. Finally, it's morning. The weather is ideal for going ashore. The island is larger than the team had expected. The ship has dropped anchor. The last preparations are made. The art treasure still needs to be packed. The heavy steel boxes, works of art themselves, were designed by well-known architects Benjamin Aranda and Chris Lash. Oh, such goes. Yep. Okay. Let's set it on top of the jacuzzi. Yeah, no, I'm just checking if it fits, that's all. Which, I don't think it fits. That doesn't work. So maybe here, this space it needs to be, it needs to be cut down, I think. What is it? This is, this is for Ellison's piece. Flat packed. So, what we've got to lose about half a centimeter. So, so can we take the piece out? You fix the box without the piece in it, and I put the piece together. We can take a picture of the piece, and then we put it back in. Do you know how to make it? All right, well, then you need the other elements. That's the piece. Oh, wow. Hmm? It's almost like a model for a little solar system made out of mag magnets and strings, and that was sort of now swallowed by this, by this treasure. It's somehow something really big, right? It's about, the, it's about everything. It's about the kind of totality of cosmos in all corners of life. But on the other side, it's just a few strings and a handful of magnets. It's nothing particularly exciting. But the story, obviously, is interesting. And then again, magnets are nice because they kind of indicate themselves where they are, disregarding whether you can see them or not, because it's a, like a, it's a magnet. So maybe it is, you know, somehow 
still magnetic while being buried down in the ground. And I think this is kind of funny, you know, you can sort of walk on the ground above, above it and a tiny bit of magnetism makes it to the surface and you can kind of feel it if you would be, if you would be sensitive to that. So Costa Rican artist, Lucia Madrid. Oh, this yeah. is amazing, I love this. Piece. It's a drawing of the global seed vault in Svalbard Island. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is um, called The Ghosts of All Eternity. Uh, we wanted to include some ghosts in the treasure. And these are actual recordings of ghosts that were made by Carl Michael von Hauswolf. So this is a piece of wax, actually. And the whole recording is on this cylinder. Put that in. Put it up. Shoot it in. Oops. But you know what? The screws for the... For the... Cheeks on speed. All-time collaborators with us. And in fact, this uh, idea of burying a treasure came from a song that I co-wrote together with them called Art Dump. So, which is also included inside the treasure already. I think that this exhibition is more than the sum of its parts. You know, just cataloging all the individual objects that go into the chest or the exhibition architecture and posting that online, that could happen, but it changes the meaning of these works, you know, as a, as a group. So I think what we have here is a, is a dream and what we treasure is the little bit of space in which we can actually dream. The things that we cannot hold in our hands that we can think about while dreaming. And, and, um, and the truth is that the art world has been so obsessed with kind of organizing, systematizing, rationalizing the way we dream. So museums are kind of very predictable and very affirmative and totally predefined dream machines, right? You think you go in and dream, but actually you're told what to think. What can art mean when it's not just available like any other thing, like a hamburger from McDonald's or, a, I don't know, a, a bauble from a, a luxury goods shop? You know, art has to be taken out of this realm of, you know, instant access sometimes, you know, in order for us to start to talk about you know, other modes of valuation. No, we're not getting anything else. I hate to tell you this, but I think we should take this thing right out this afternoon, right now, and bury the treasure right yeah, now, because well, the conditions are perfect. It's uh, 39 pieces. 39 pieces. Yeah. Oh my god, it's sunny out there. Look at a cap. Wow. The first excursion to the island. Hey, Mario, you get it? like reflected. Andrew Ranville from the United States is obsessed by nature. He often lives for months on a deserted island in Michigan. He is constantly searching for new forms of expression. He brought an old Polaroid camera to Coco's Island. There's a, a, a strain of my work that's been dealing with islands, a, well, a big part of my work, and my arts administrative practice, like building a residency on an, another island in Lake Superior, on Rabbit Island. 
Um, so I think there's a lot of threads that were coming together and it, it made sense, I think, to come to Cocos and to bury the treasure, to be part of the expedition. So, yeah, I was very excited. Well, I think all artists love a challenge and artists also love a good story. And this island is so complete with its, its, its very rare uh, microcosm of a, of a very unique climate. It, its wildlife and its marine life are very unique. And, but it's the most important and the most well-known part of this island is, of course, its history and all the myths and legends of pirates and um, of treasure burying, of treasure hunting. I mean, everybody from every loose end half-wit pirate all the way up to President Roosevelt tried to find the treasure of Lima. So, I mean, these are colossal treasures buried here on this beach just behind us. And, you know, an artist asked to contribute a work that would be buried alongside one of the most famous treasures ever lost, I think, it captured their imagination. They loved the idea. And egal if you're doing ephemeral intervention, egal what are you doing, there is a traces of the intervention, of the action, of the painting, of any kind of art who can be produced. And, and these traces, it's a lot. You also have this wish that it stays somewhere. And then that's why I thought that was really interesting because it's both really what the art wants to be, but simultaneously completely the opposite of what it does. And then I had a hard time to decide what I will put in. And I actually put a piece with my friend Julius von Bismarck. So we made a, a work together that, that we put in, a picture work having to do with culture and nature and, and this idea of like the human trace in the world. I will not tell too much about it because that has to stay secret. Weather change. In only a few minutes, the tropical sky darkens. The first harbinger of the rainy season arrives. With such weather, the treasure cannot be buried. Too dangerous, as the artworks are to be hidden in an inaccessible place. The weather prognosis for tomorrow promises sunshine, the decisive day. The ship's captain suggests a clear schedule. I think in order to do it, we need to do it as the tide is high and coming down. The high tide's at 5.30. So my suggestion is that we have breakfast at 6 a.m. Uh, I'd like to be in the tender and departing, or at least loading the tender at 6.30. Um, as you guys saw today, getting in and out of the water, from the swell, the surge, the rocks, whatever, it's it's difficult and it's dangerous. Um, there's a certain amount of risk involved and you know my job is to bring you all back to the mainland in one piece. Early in the morning, will the weather hold?
Perfection. Look at that. Perfect. Huh? Oh. Can I get an extension cable? Is anyone? Is it Jeff? I remember you mentioning it, Francesca. Yeah. Here we go. We're vacuuming. What's the PSI that they say it needs to be at, Nico, uh, Nadine? Minus Take it three. up to three and then pull it out and then See pin it. it and then it can go and then we'll lose like 0.5. You have no pressure. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's not working. I think this is slipping around. Yeah, I don't think you know, it's, it's slipping around. It's like, I don't think it's. No, the glass on glass should actually just hold once you apply the vacuum. But I was warned that if you have any hair or little specks on the, on the it could actually just. But are you sure that you set up the pump right? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Sound too I'm <laughs> sure. I mean, there's. Yeah, if you try, if try. If you yeah, guys, please just let me just yeah. do it the way I was instructed, okay? Did yeah. you can, if you, can you try open Look. with your finger yeah. to see Nicola, if it's work. please. I just need to try the it the way I was told to do it. For the things work. That looks better. That's more centered. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So no way you can it's one and a half. Thank God. <laughs> so we're gonna go up to three, <laughs> and then whip it off. Three, three. no, but then we, then you plug it. We'll lose half a bar when it when we pull this off. Nevertheless, you have to be fast. You have to over vacuum it in order to suck. I'm ready. One, two, two three. three. Quick, quick, quick. Yes. Bravo. Say! <laughs> okay. All right. My suggestion right now is for everybody to please get into your bathing suits and be prepared with some shoes. We have dry bags. Everybody can put their shoes in when we get to shore because you will be swimming from the boat to shore. I'm highly confident. I agree. I've got my sun cream, my GoPro, my hat, and. Schnell, schnell. But you don't have to wear the big yoga men's baggy you know, grey you know, one. Get it. <laughs> did you get it? Did you get it? Did you Out. Everybody happy? Yeah. Let's roll. They're on their way. The team is relaxed just before the burial. Now the question looms large. Will they be successful in transporting the heavy art treasure to a hidden spot to land there and to heave it up the steep craggy walls? The coast, jagged and raw. Despite the low tide, the breakers are treacherous. The steel treasure chest is waterproof. And still, the slightest error and the whole undertaking could be for naught. Now it's about teamwork and hard physical work. The hiding place has probably never been visited before by another human. There is no path, but the greatest challenge still lies ahead. 
Okay, now we go this way. A waterfall. This is the route the treasure with a combined weight of 180 kilos must take. Fortunately, Andrew is an excellent climber. Higher up, he will fasten rope so that a rope ladder can be attached. It's a tough job. Will the weather hold? If it should rain, the island will transform itself into water spewing green cliffs. Time is running out. Meanwhile, the spot at which the treasure is to be buried has been found, but the problems have just begun. First we put the top on, we see what, if it's really the right way up, yeah, okay? And then, and then we place the bottom, like in the middle there, the, the point will stick in, and then we do it up there, and we can dig the bottom out, no? Well, or not. my only thought is this, two things. Can you stand next to it? Okay, that's the problem. Yeah, I think this is quicksand, so we just need to get it started and I think it'll sink on its own in time. Maybe not in front of our eyes, like, uh, as we watch it, but it, you put your foot in there and you just start to go. So that's useful for us. But it, it also means that we can't stand in the pool and dig out the hole, because we'll be digging our own grave, I guess. Okay, now it's going to be slippery and it's fucking heavy, so don't pinch your fingers in there. A last look at the treasure. A collection of works by well-known contemporary artists. In New York, a map will be auctioned off that can lead the owner to the spot. But the map is encrypted in a code, and the code must be broken. Additionally, searching for treasure on the island is forbidden. Probably, the art treasure will remain hidden here for eternity, just like the church treasure, the legendary treasure of Lima. Slowly but surely, the feeling grows that this is how the pirates may have felt after having hidden their booty. Who has the top? And it's little elves, Ryan! We need to finish it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The only captain to bury a treasure to never get it back. Yeah. Huh? Bravo. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Here we can go. We have a couple people here piling rocks on the need to get all the camera gear and everything down now because the surge is getting worse. Okay, well, let's do it now, please. Yeah. Cursing the amount of weight. 
the ocean is such a powerful and beautiful force and watching all these things that you've spent so long working you know with a team to kind of develop and have manufactured and thinking about how you're going to transport them safely and then just seeing them tossed about by a wave that's you know off from the surface of the water to its peak you know half as tall as you they just look like matchboxes and toys and and you know it, it could just tip over and smash into a rock but that was that was fun for me the purity was also when uh we drank the rum, but then we also washed all the mud off ourselves yeah, in the yeah, waterfall. No, was great. Yeah, so we were laying in the waterfall, just washing all the mud off ourselves. And then after a shot of rum. I said to Andy when we were in that waterfall, you know, sometimes you find yourself in a waterfall, in a, in a pool of water that no one else has ever swum in, on an island in the middle of the Pacific after burying your treasure. Why? Because art demands it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. Uh, whatever reckoning may happen yeah. from this, you know, yeah. let's hope. It's our, maybe our reckoning will be a positive reckoning because we're really being pirates in reverse, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Because we're, and our intention is to leave it there for, to leave it there, to have it be a legacy. When I was maybe six years old, I was, a, it was a dream to bury a treasure. And now I'm 27 and just getting reality. So it's, uh, it's a nice thing. Um, I never thought that I would come to the island of Robinson and, 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 and yeah, and just bury my treasure or our treasure. Normally art is so simple, so direct, so, you know, it has its message and, and it, I don't know, this is interesting because it's a huge collaboration, it's massively interdisciplinary, which is what I love doing. It brings really interesting people together. And then there is this moment where there's fear, where you're putting your own boundaries at the complete limit, where you really don't know if you're going to make it. And just going through that emotionally, personally, yourself, you know, then you come out, come out of it and everything it seems very boring and very tranquil and uninspiring. A legend is born. Somewhere in the mud of the island lies a great artistic treasure. The proceeds of the treasure map auction will benefit research for the protection of the sharks that live in the waters surrounding the island. Nature and art, inspiring and serving one another.